Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, it's gonna be a little bit different. We haven't done a portrait in a long time, so this is gonna be kind of fun. And today we're doing a celebrity. It's gonna be Adam Lambert, and it's gonna be on a t-shirt. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be putting the shirt on the template first, and then sketching out uh, his portrait on the front of the shirt. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, and let's jump right into it. It's been a while since I've done a uh, portrait, so this is gonna be kind of fun for me. And uh, the first thing I did was print out a color version of the picture. This way I have some sort of reference to look at uh, for when I'm utilizing and picking my colors. So uh, I went ahead and did that, and I also printed a large uh, version of that same picture just in black and white. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's not big enough so it's actually two pieces of paper put together I thought it was kind of too small and uh, I went ahead and printed something a little bit bigger you can kind of see what the process that we're using so we're gonna cut out all the uh, darker areas and use that as a stencil using a little bit of tacky spray I went ahead and spray the back of that stencil just so it doesn't move while I'm spraying a little bit of paint So as you can see, the stencil is very rough. So essentially, I just want to uh, make sure the distance between certain um, areas is exactly the same. So, you know, the hard lines underneath the chin uh, and the height between that and like the eyebrow and then from there to like um, his his hairline. So um, that's what I'm using the stencil for. I'm not really putting any detail. I just want to get some sort of uh, reference uh, points in there. This way I can start uh, doing everything by hand. And I'm using a very light color, this way um, I can go back and cover it. Like I said, I'm just using it as a reference point, so uh, eventually it's going to get either covered up by a darker color or, uh, or something else. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm using that lighter color. So let's go ahead and finish spraying and remove that stencil and see what we got. And as you can see, there's really nothing on that stencil, it's just a few... Uh, reference points uh, for me to start working from and then from there I'll start uh, lining up the um, the lines and a little bit of the shadows using that same color that I use for the stencil so uh, normally working from very light to very dark so that's uh, the direction I'm gonna go with and then towards the end I'll drop a little bit of highlights So normally after I do the stencil, I try to uh, bring out most uh, noticeable lines. So super hard lines, you know, underneath the chin, the hair, um, you know, if I see, you know, more lines in the eyebrow, I'll start doing that. And then from there, I'll do more of the softer lines, um, maybe a little bit of the shadows, try to fill in some of the, uh, the skin area and stuff like that. So I'll do that first and uh, I'll continue with that process of, um, towards the end. Um, but I'll be using darker and darker colors. So I'll start off with a, obviously a little peach, uh, very light color, and then I'll continue my way up uh, using darker tones. So um, if you guys don't know who Adam Lambert is, he's a very popular singer. He's uh, up and coming right now, and he's done a lot of stuff. Um, I guess he's been on uh, like American Idol and and Glee, um, Clash of the Cover Bands, he's been on that, and he's had some, you know, albums that have come out, um, so he's, he's pretty good, and then he, uh, I think he also sings with the, uh, the original members of, uh, Queen, so he's been doing that and has his own YouTube channel, so, um, let me know what you guys think of his career, uh, leave it in the comments below, and I'll leave a link, uh, to his YouTube channel so you guys can check that out. So as you can see, I'm working on the eye area, and what I did is I cut out the uh, the eye uh, out of the paper and, and kind of glued it on there so it'll give me a little protection, maintain that white area uh, fairly white until I'm ready to work on it. So essentially, I'm just working around the, uh, the eye there. So 
so in this first initial pass what I want to do is get all the details on the shirt itself so I want to get as much details as I can um, this way all the proportions are right uh, shadows are where they need to be um, you know details as far as the uh, the mustache and the tattoo I want to get all that stuff down and properly placed right now in the early stages of using the very light color this way later on um, when I'm using the darker color I know exactly where to go to place those shadows or if I need to do some sort of adjustment I can do it then and of course I did use a, a very lighter shade previously so I can cover it if I need to So after laying down the majority of the details, I'm going to go ahead and try to put some tones in there that uh, I see on the picture. So I see some yellows in there and I see some grays in there. So I want to put all that stuff um, in uh, before I continue adding more details. This way, um, I guess my shadows kind of look you know, as close as possible to the photograph. So I'm going to be adding obviously more color on top of those colors. but as an underlaying, um, I guess, uh, base, I want to make sure those colors are also included. I don't want to add them to the end because it'll look, it'll start looking a little dirty. So I try to do those early ahead. All right, and it looks like it's taking shape. So some of the tones, the underlying tones are already on there. So I'm gonna come back with a little bit of a darker color, um, which is a, like a medium brown and, and start uh, pulling some of those details out. So, um, you know, uh, darker areas and, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's uh, coming along pretty good. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the, uh, the tone of the face. So once I start laying, the super dark colors everything's just gonna pop out and it's gonna make it look cool So before I continue with the, the details on the face, I'm going to uh, use the same stencil and just cut out his face to protect what I've already done. And I'm just going to be working on the background now. So I'm going to, you know, kind of loosely spray it on there. I don't want it to have too much detail. And if I can, I want it to, to, to be a little bit blurry. This way the front image would, you know, would stand out a little bit more. So I usually tend to do that in, in any of my, you know, uh, work. So. Um, including in Photoshop if I'm doing some sort of you know picture I tend to blur out the back a little bit so it looks a little more crisp doing portraits can be a little tricky because if you don't get the eyes right uh, the whole thing gets thrown off and doesn't look right so uh, always spend a little bit of extra time making sure that the eyes are pointing the same uh, direction and the coloring is correct and obviously the size of the eyes so just take your time and really take a look at that reference picture before you move on
So in the reference picture, you can see that he doesn't have that much uh, color or darkness in his eyes. So I went ahead and just used kind of like a lighter gray um, uh, for his eyes. This way they, they really look, uh, you know, realistic. So lips are not always red all the way, it's, it's only like a little hint, so usually a shadow. So if you notice on here, I'm only applying um, the reddish pinkish tone at the bottom of his lip and it's only a little bit. And if you notice, once I apply that, the, the whole area or like all the lips um, pop out. So uh, you don't necessarily need to cover the whole lips when you were doing lips, it's just a hint of, of the color and it'll make it'll trick your eye to looking like the whole thing is, is kind of painted that way so kind of a cool little a little tip so you don't you know over paint um, your area And of course, after we're done, we're drying everything with a hairdryer and then coming back with a little bit of white and getting some of those highlights uh, in there. So uh, it'll make everything really pop out. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh, finished product looks like. All right, and there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys enjoy the process of me uh, airbrushing a portrait. It's always a challenge to try to get those uh, tones correctly. And uh, But it turned out pretty well. I enjoyed it, it came out nice. And uh, if you guys need anything airbrushed like this, you can always uh, contact me on my Etsy shop down in the description below or on Instagram. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video and take it easy for now, bye-bye.